Good morning, Bama. I'll try that again for the next 50 people. Good morning, Bama. Glad to be here on this morning. As uh, Bobby did mention, um, I, I've never been to Bama. I've been to Houston, but I've never been to Bama. And while I was at the Agape Conference, uh, there were a lot of people that uh, wanted to talk to me after uh, the session that I did. But uh, Brother Stevens, he comes up to me like immediately after. And he said, man, we got to get you to come to Bama. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right. And then, you know, I shook a few other hands and then I run right back into Brother Stevens again. He's like, man, we got to get, here's my contact information. I said, I'd love to be there. And praise God, we are here on this morning. Uh, the, the main gist that I want us to think about today is harmony, harmony. And, and what we just heard with the praise team, wasn't that just beautiful, the harmony that they had? Amen. Oh, by the way, I'm a Southern preacher, so I'm fueled by amens. Uh, yeah. uh, but, but, but what you heard in that is one of the things that the Apostle Paul was trying to get the early church to understand about what God was really doing all throughout creation. You're familiar with the struggle between the Jews and Gentiles. Jews believed uh, because God chose them uh, that they were a special people and they weren't special just because God chose them, but, but because God chose them, they became special. But they thought because we have this heritage, hey, we are somebody. But then you have the Gentiles, and the Gentiles, they treated the Gentiles horribly because they were different. And so throughout scripture, you see this struggle take place. And, and, and don't forget, the Jews, Israel had their own struggles in their relationship with God, but we don't want to mention that we're just special. So when you find out that Jesus had come not just to die for Jews, but to die for all of creation, because all of us suffered the same ills, the same problems. We all had a sin problem. We all needed a savior. The only thing special about you and the only thing special about me is I'm a lump of dust that God decided to breathe upon. And because he breathed upon us, I become a living soul. And so when, when we come to the apostle Paul, Paul is a Jew. And he's in that mindset of, you know, we are somebody special and don't even regard the Gentiles. They don't even have a chance with a right relationship with God. And especially this new group of folk that's come along the way. This was the church. And so Paul spent some time crucifying and, and, and causing all kinds of havoc for the people of the way, the early church. And then he runs into, he was traveling on Damascus and, and the bright lights pulled up behind him, just like they do when you're speeding. Uh, the bright lights come upon him and it's Jesus, right? He runs upon Jesus and Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? Now here's Paul thinking, I'm doing the right thing, but I run into Jesus and Jesus says, yeah, you were going full steam ahead, but you were going the wrong way. You're persecuting me. And I want you to go preach to the Gentiles. Could you imagine a Jew preaching to Gentiles? This difference is going to cause a problem. But then as we look at what the church was becoming, what God had originally designed for it to be, all nations, all peoples, you have these early congregations that start up with Jews and Gentiles. And can you imagine the difficulty in those church gatherings. These people think something different because of these people. And so Paul, as he begins preaching, yes, he's preaching as Jesus instructs him to the Gentiles, but he's also got to keep these Jews in line with what God is doing. So oftentimes he's writing with this angle to both. So he starts sending out these letters to early churches Colossae being one of them that they, many scholars believe that was one of the first letters that he wrote out to these churches. And if you look at the book of Colossians, Paul is just hitting point after point after point after point. And so then he subsequently sends another letter out to the churches. 
And that is the letter to the church at Ephesus. It follows the exact same outline of Colossians, but it explains a little bit more. But today I want to focus on harmony as Paul helps us to understand it in Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse number 12. He says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another in love, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you all must do. Listen to those things that Paul deals with. He says, put on tender mercy. You know the time that we really want to talk about mercy? When we need it. Now, if somebody else does something wrong, what do we say? Well, put them under the jail, right? But, but when it's us, we want mercy. Paul says, put on tender mercies. He says, kindness, humility. I'm not above anyone. When we think about being humble, it's not necessarily me putting myself down, but it's understanding my place in all of God's creation. Again, I tell you, I'm a lump of dust that God breathed upon. Whenever you think you are high and holy, understand that, that we are about $3.50 at Lowe's. You get a bag of, bag of topsoil for about $3.50. And you say, well, you don't know who I am. I drive a sudden and such. Yes, you are a $3.50 bag of dirt that drives a nice vehicle. <laughs> Humility, meekness. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is strength under God's control. Long suffering. Thank God that he has suffered long with us. He says, bearing with one another. We're going to come back to that term, but bearing with one another. Do you realize that just like somebody else gets on your nerves, you get on somebody else's nerves? There's somebody that when you come along, they say, oh my gosh, here they come. Okay. Hey, how you doing? All right. And we have to bear with, we have to deal with. Now, why is Paul dealing with this? Because we got Jews and we have Gentiles that have this painful history. They have this history, they have these differences culturally, they have all of this going on, but now because of the blood of Jesus, they come together. Now thank God that he unites us by the cross, but there still may be some residual pain. So because of that, he says we are bearing with one another. Some stuff you just kind of got to deal with. It's not wrong, it's just different. He says, forgiving one another. Don't we all need forgiveness? If anyone has complained against another, even so as Christ has forgiven you, so you must also do. But then notice verse 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. He says, above all of this, put on love. Love is that which really unites us. Love is what caused Christ to come down from heaven to die for each and every one of us. Love is what covers a multitude of sin. He says, put on love. But love is a really interesting conversation until we have to apply it. Love is really good to talk about, but it's different when you have to live it out. Love is a very good topic to preach about, but it's difficult when I have to practice it. Amen, somebody. Love is good until they are a Democrat. Love is good until they are a Republican. Love is all right to talk about until it becomes real. And until we are real, we won't get better. Love is good until it requires you to love someone different. And that's why Paul said, you've got to love Jews and Gentiles. You think you're better. Both of you sin and both of you needed the blood of Christ. And so because of this, 
it should cause us to come together because we're both in the same boat, so to speak. And that brings me to my subject matter about harmony. God loves harmony. God loves harmony because when we look at what he's done with creation, do you realize when he ordered chaos and brought order to it, you have sun and moon, light and darkness, day and night. You have animals that are in the sea, animals that are in the air, animals that can dwell together but not cause any friction with one another. God loves harmony and it's so good to see in nature, but when you put two of his children together, Amen. Harmony becomes difficult. Let me tell you a few, few reasons why harmony becomes difficult. I told you about bearing with one another. That terminology, uh, it's because we have to kind of engage and go through. When you think about harmony, when I think about it, I always think about singing. And some of the most beautiful songs that we love involve different elements, different musical uh, elements. There's this one thing called syncopation. Syncopation means that while we may have the same metronome, we may have the same flow, we may have a slightly different rhythm. Y'all following that? Let me, let me give you an example. Uh, some folk on this side of the track, uh, they may sing like this. I want y'all to do this with me. Y'all got that? Some folk will sing... Glory, glory, hallelujah. All right, now that's on that side of the track. But on this side of the track over here, they'll sing the same song, but they'll sing it a little different. So you'll have a glory, glory, same song. Do you see this? We're still hitting this note, but we kind of take it a little different. That's syncopation. Thank you all so much. That's syncopation. And syncopation, some folk will say, wait a minute, you're not singing on the right note. Yes, I am. It's just a little different. So when you bring people who have a different background, a different history, a different culture, but you bring them together to sing the same song, you're going to run into some, wait a minute, hold on. That's different. And God uses that for his glory. What better evidence of the existence of God than to take two different peoples who should hate one another and cause them to love one another? That testifies. How do I know it testifies? Jesus says, they'll know, you'll, they'll know that you're my disciple by what? By the way you love one another. Even with your differences, you tend to love. Another element of music that displays this harmony that God loves is something called dissonance. Dissonance is when two notes are really close together. They tend to rub a little bit. So while you may have a, uh, but because of dissonance, you have a, uh, and putting those two together, oh, it rubs. But some of the best songs you've ever heard have dissonant notes, notes that rub. And the reason why they rub is that deep down, they're really close together. What does that mean about you and I? Some of us, some of those people that we have a struggle getting along with, if we peel back that onion, the reason why you don't get along is that you're rubbing and you're rubbing because you're real close to each other. But when we put that in the unity of Christ with other voices, that dissonance, that rub now sounds beautiful. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. I'll give you another that's really interesting. Sometimes when we talk about love and we talk about unity in the body of Christ, We mix up unity with uniformity because we'll take a couple of scriptures that say, for example, Acts chapter 2, they spoke the same thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, they spoke the same thing. We often mistake unity for uniformity. Can can y'all help me with this one real quick? I want you to hum this note. Hmm. Now, hum it, hum it. Come on, come on, come on. Now. You think that that's unity, thank you. You think that that's unity, 
and harmony and harmonization, but actually that's just amplification. We've just sung the same note. And sometimes when you get people that come together from different backgrounds, different groups, and you put them together, you say, hey, we've got to have unity. But what we really mean is you got to do it like I do it. You got to sound like I sound. Otherwise, we're not united. But that's not unity. How do I know this is our tendency? Because this was the tendency of the early church. Jews would tell Gentiles, you know what you got to do in order to be a good Christian? You got to go through the same path that we went through. Wait a minute. I'm not a Jew. Why do I have to become a Jew in order to become a Christian? But that was their vision of what unity looked like. And sometimes we think that unity means we're singing the same thing we do. No, the unity that God talks about is not uniformity, but it is that we have come together to go in the same direction. We're serving the same God. I've got a different background, but I'm serving the same God. I've got different struggles and different hurts that I deal with, but we serve the same Jesus. I've got different habits. I've got different hangups, but we're filled with the same spirit and we're going the same way. Watch this. We've never practiced this, but watch this. This time, I want you to harmonize with this note. You ready? Hmm. Keep it going. Louder, louder. Now, we've got some high. We've got some low. Soprano, alto, tenor. Keep it going. Keep it going. Louder. We've got some bass. Watch this. We got some fillers. Y'all don't even know what you're seeing, but you got in there, didn't you? Keep it going. Keep it going. Everybody is where they need to be. You found your way to find your way. And listen to how it sounds. Come on, come on, come on. Mm. Now that is harmony. Praise God. Thank you all so much. That's harmony. And what God was doing with the early church is he's saying, I want you to harmonize. How do I know this? He tells us in 2 Corinthians, he says, you are a part of the ministry of reconciliation. And that term reconciliation simply means bringing things into harmony with God. And those things that show the world that we are united in Christ is when they hear that kind of harmony. When they see people that in the world don't get along, but only in Christ, they're able to function quite well together. They get along. They love one another. It is because we are in harmony with God. There are people in this world who are suffering with hurts and hangups and habits and heartache and pain. And they're looking for that kind of harmony. But I'll tell you what they do. They go to different groups that are accepting of them. If they're angry at the world, they're angry at their parents, they're angry at their family, they'll find a group of angry folk and they'll become united with them. If they're struggling with their identity, they'll find another group that's struggling with their identity and we all struggle together. If they're sad and depressed, they'll find a group that can relate to that. But what I have come to find out is that in the body of Christ, you got some hurt folk. You got some angry folk. You got some folk who are struggling. You got some folk who don't understand why life started out the way that it did. But the only way they're able to function as God would have them to is that God became the solution. He became the balm to my ills. He became the solution to my problems. If I'm struggling in my identity, I go to the one who created me because certainly he can tell me who I am. I go to the one that helps me to understand why I'm angry. I go to the one that helps me to understand they've got flaws like I've got flaws. I go to the one that helps to heal even those wounds that nobody else can see. And because we all come, we all sit at the feet of the cross. As Paul would say, we draw nigh 
to Jesus. See, when I look across the way, I don't get jealous. I don't get envious. I appreciate you because we're in the same family. You get a new Escalade, I'm not going to bad talk you. I'm going to be thankful. You know why? Because when my car breaks down, I'm going to ride in luxury when you pick me up. I don't get bent out of shape because God has favor on you and he blesses you with a nice big house. Praise God for it because when my house floods, I don't have to go to the hotel. I'm coming to stay. Amen. Amen. Y'all got quiet over that time. But this is the kind of harmony that God loves. And when we hear it, we love to hear it. When you hear all the different voices, we love to hear that. And again, God is able to take those differences and blend them beautifully. He takes some broken people. He takes a broken vessel like me and is able to make beautiful music, not because of me, but because of him. And so when we come together, we show the world the kind of God that we serve. This is why we have to, as Paul would say, bear with one another. I'll tell you why. God uses differences for his glory. Satan uses differences for destruction. And when we find it and we listen to Satan, oh, I'll hate you for your difference. And it doesn't matter what it is. You make a couple of dollars more than me, I'm angry. Your skin tone is different from mine, I'm angry. We don't support the same team, I'm angry. You don't believe that Michael Jordan is the goat, I'm angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God will use those differences to show his glory. One of the things that we fight about sometimes in our circles is this thing called unity. And I'm fighting very hard about it because I've lived on both sides of the track. I've lived on, kind of like how Paul, you know, I've had, I've been without, I've been in this audience, I've been in this audience, and what I see across every audience, across every economic spectrum, is that people suffer the same things. Yet we claim to serve the same God. Well, if you serve the same God that I serve, then we're united. I want to share a world with my kids and the next generation that doesn't have to be hung up by the pain of the last generation. We look back and we find pain and agony, but I want to create a place where when we look forward, we see joy and unity. Say amen if you can. I want to see that. And what it takes for us to do that is that we have to harmonize. Can we do it again? Let's harmonize, church. Mm -hmm. Listen to the beauty of God. Keep it going. Different hurts, different pains, different struggles. But isn't it beautiful? When God looks down on this world, keep it going. He wants to hear that. When he looks in the kingdom, he wants to hear that. Thank you. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. The one who came into this world, left heaven to come into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. We thank you for helping us in healing us. We all have struggles. We all have pains, hurts, and hangups. But we thank you for your healing power. Father, as the body of Christ, we want to tell the world about unity. But help us to first display 
that unity. You tell us in your word that we are part of the ministry of reconciliation. We must first be consiled, brought together before we can talk about reconciling. Before we can tell the world about what it means to have unity, we must have unity with you. There may be those within our audience today who is not in right relationship with you. We pray that they come to you. And the only way that we can is through your son, Jesus. There are those right now because of their family structure, because of their background, they struggle in understanding what real love, real unity is about. Father, we pray that when they come to Bama, that they see it, that they feel it, that they are embraced by the love of God. We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. We don't have it all together, but we serve a God who does. So help us to understand that our strength in our discipleship, our strength in our evangelism is that when we display the love of Christ, there are those who have sinned. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sin. It's a struggle that we have. There are those who are hurting in ways that we cannot see, emotional, psychological hurts and hangups. Heal them is our prayer. Father, there are those who are watching now who desire to, to experience what you have for them to experience in life. We pray that they come into relationship with Jesus. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. Unto him who's able to keep us from falling. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. The name that is above every other name. The name whereby we must be saved. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all who believed said.